Okay, so this is my mini ITX Everything Works Hackintosh. You can skip to different parts in the description of the video. Let's start off with the parts that I chose for this build. So we've got a Core i7-9700K, 970 EVO Plus, the motherboard, which is the Z390 from Asus, which is found to be the most compatible for a Hackintosh ITX system. 32 gigs of RAM in one stick. So in the future, we can upgrade to 64 gigs of RAM. Corsair SF600 modular power supply, and just two two terabyte hard drives, a Radeon RX Vega 56, and Kraken X62 quad cooler and the Streacom DA2 aluminium case. This is the guide I followed on Tony Mac. I'll link it in the description. Now to get Wi-Fi working on this motherboard, we need to switch out the Wi-Fi card uh, because the current Intel one doesn't support Mac. And so I ordered this one, which took ages to come from China, which is a DW1560. Okay, so the screws to remove are these black ones, one, two, three, four, and also these two silver ones. So now the heatsink can be removed. The easy way to remove the IO plate is with one of these tools. And then you can just get in here, under here, and it pops this spring clip open. The IO plate comes off. And next you just pull up on the module and it just comes out and there's just one screw on the module on the side so we can just unplug the antennas unscrew that one and put in the new one so I've installed the CPU now let's install the one stick of 32 gigabytes of RAM so next up is our uh, Samsung EVO 970 NVMe SSD. I've installed the Corsair uh, SF600 power supply onto the bracket here. So now we just need to plug it into the power, make sure it's switched on, and then put it up into the case. Okay, so I've just put the cooler backplate on the motherboard, and now we can install the motherboard into the case. Uh, we can go ahead and put the graphics card in. I actually had to remove the rear bracket for these hard drives. It was causing a clash with the graphics card. Clearance is so tight. Okay, now I'm gonna do all the boring stuff, which is wiring. Uh, okay, so um, the wiring is pretty much done. It was uh, not great, but it's worked. And now I've got the cooler set up with the fans attached and also the brackets so now I will attempt to gracefully install this everything's pretty much hooked up so we can put the radiator on and it just fits against the graphics card and then on the back it's uh, pretty tight uh, but it all fits so let's power it on Uh, using this guide here you can go down here go to bias configuration and it just goes through all the options here that need to be set up download macOS Catalina and then you can use Apple guide to create a installer download Clover continue change the location and put it as the install USB and then the important point here is to click customize tick the first two options and the only option here you want to make sure you tick is up to your memory fix leave everything as they were before and then just click install okay so keep on hitting f8 to go into the boot menu and choose the usb drive boot from macOS install macOS install Catalina Okay, so once we've got here, we want to install Clover onto the actual SSD or hard drive instead of having to boot off the USB every time. So there we go, and it's automatically going to boot from the macOS 
hard drive now. We've got Wi-Fi working, no problem, and Bluetooth. So here are the machine specs, 32 gigs of RAM, and it shows it a Core i9, but it's actually a Core i7. Okay, so I just did some benchmarks with Geekbench to compare them against my 2013 MacBook Pro Retina. This is the MacBook's results. So to compare that with the, the Hackintosh, over double the multi-core score and a bit higher on the single core as well. So overall pretty good. Thanks for watching this small build video. If you've got any problems with the installation or hardware, leave a comment in the description and I'll see if I can answer it. Thanks for watching.